listen to Europe's number one pro wrestling podcast, Zeppelo Substitute, bringing you the best in pro wrestling interviews, news, and opinions with Mr. CB Knight. Hello, welcome, 2016, yeah, wonderful, isn't it, 2016, this is going to be a good year, I've got a great feeling about 2016, more because uh, of some personal battles uh, that I'm going through, won't go into too many details obviously because you just never know who's listening, and I could get arrested, <laughs> but we're going to beat them, well, well and truly on the road to beating them, and it wasn't like a New Year thing where I said... Right, tomorrow I'm going to start going on a diet. Tomorrow I'm going to start doing... I started this uh, on Christmas Day. I was fed up, absolutely fed up of having steaming headaches. Uh, feeling like a bag of shit most of the time. Uh, all stemming from the amount of medication that I have to take uh, because of my absolutely screwed, knackered back. Um, and I had to make a decision. Do I uh, keep taking uh, loads and loads of this morphine that they keep giving me? Liquid morphine in bottles. Uh, also, oxycodone, instant release. Uh, I was about maximum dosage of that per day. It was no kind of life, to be honest with you, and I never really realised um, until my little daughter came in one morning and said, Daddy, are you poorly today? Do you have a headache? And I thought, my God, she thinks of me as somebody that's pretty much um, knackered, you know? Not that I'm a, not a great dad, if I may say so. I am a tremendous father, great father, but... Um, I want to be there all the time, you know. I want to be waking up with no migraines, which are caused by too much medication. Uh, and we're going to kick it. So I decided that's it. Uh, so for five days, I just completely halved it all. Uh, and pretty much now we're working it down to getting off it, which is quite amazing, because I thought it would be a really hard battle uh, to get off the amount of painkillers that I was on. Uh, we're talking heavy duty, you know, oxycodone, we're talking morphine. Uh, amongst other things uh, but right now I'm on literally a quarter of what I was taking two weeks ago so very excited and yes I do feel better I feel much more wide awake uh, and I feel ready to take on the world this year it's going to be a great year podcast is going to be a really big priority for me as well uh, we've got a lot of people interested now uh, we're really really hitting those numbers uh, got back into the top 50 uh, just last week it literally takes one person uh, to mention something on Twitter, and all of a sudden you can see the podcast shoot straight back up the charts again. Uh, a lot of my friends are helping me out with getting some guests from America, um, guests from the UK. It's good. It's going really, really well. Great guns, may I say. Uh, the It's Nighttime Wrestling Podcast, and I'm overjoyed, absolutely overjoyed. Thank you very much to everybody uh, for the support. We are the little podcast that can. That's how I like to look at it, the little podcast that can. We've got no big sponsors. I'm not being paid to do this. It costs me money to do this. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible we're going to get some sponsors. I have been approached uh, because of the success we're having so far uh, to stick a few little things in there. But I promise that I'm not going to do the whole thing uh, with DraftKings.com. And I also promise not to do uh, any silly impressions. <clears throat> Jim Ross. Uh, this is the little podcast that can. And I need your support uh, to keep this thing going. Uh, and it is absolutely marvellous, the support I have received so far. So please, uh, tweet it out. Tweeting seems to be the way forward. Uh, literally one tweet. Jimmy Havoc sent a tweet out the other day. Uh, and literally about 40 people downloaded the show straight afterwards. So if you are a professional wrestler, or if you've got a lot of Twitter followers, if you're a fan of professional wrestling, just send out a tweet. Say, if you listen to this, it's a really good show. Uh, that is what is going to keep us going and become not the little podcast anymore, but the big podcast that did because of you lot. And I do really appreciate it. Thank you. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to Jody Fleisch. How cool is that going to be? Uh, definitely somebody that um, was an inspiration to many, many of the wrestlers that are on the way now. I've known Jody for years. He used to make me look a million dollars taking all my moves, landing right on the back of his head. And just an amazingly talented guy. Uh, I think if he'd have stuck with it um, and just not had some of the problems that he had, um, he would have been a massive, massive superstar by now. Uh, but I think he still enjoys it, does it a little bit. Not recorded it yet, I'm talking with him tonight. Uh, Joe Legend uh, just missed a connecting flight uh, to miss the podcast recording, but I'm sure we'll get it sorted. Uh, and Drew Galloway is a really hard man to get hold of. Literally, a really hard man to get hold of. Uh, we had it arranged... And I've not heard back from him. But I'm sure he's just a busy man. I'm sure we'll sort it out. Also, Mark Dallas, uh, the promoter and owner of ICW. 
uh, is going to come on and tell me about how he's made it so popular, which will be a really, really interesting story. Uh, my Scottish, Glaswegian, isn't very good. I think I speak better Greek, to be honest. Um, but he said he's going to tone it down for me, uh, so hopefully we will have an amazing chat as well. Today's guest, fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this. Don't know him too well. Met him a few times. He's from my neck of the woods. And if you would like to listen to somebody uh, with an amazing passion for professional wrestling, um, you know, if you want to go to WWE, if you want to make it to New Japan, you need this kind of passion. Um, and if you listen to this kid, Nathan Cruz, there's nobody I've ever spoken to that is so sure of themselves in a non-cocky way. He's just confident. He believes in himself. He believes that he's a good product. And I truly believe that he's going to make it. I really, really do. Uh, we come from the same neck of the woods, as I said. We're 30 minutes away from each other. Not right now, obviously, because I'm in Cyprus. I bet he wishes he was 30 minutes away now. <laughs> but uh, I'm from Grimsby. He's from Hull. Uh, we've got a lot of people in common who we've met over the years. And this was... Um, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I thought, he's a lot younger than me. I don't know too much about him. How's it going to go? Really enjoyed it. Uh, and I think I probably made a new friend. Uh, so Nathan Cruz is the guest for today. Uh, please, if you can... Uh, I know I say it every time, but it's so important. Uh, go wherever you're getting your podcast from and hit the subscribe button. It'll make sure that you get every new podcast that I upload. I'm going to start going where we can do it at a certain time each week, uh, but it's very difficult. I've got a family, got a wife, uh, two children, two dogs, um, and a busy, busy life over here. So it's very difficult uh, to always try and nail deadlines. So if you want to make sure that you get the podcast, hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, leave me a review if you can, uh, which is good. And if you can't do that, just rate it. Make sure it's five stars, though. That would be much appreciated. So today's guest, one to watch, in my opinion. Um, and I've given him five years to make it. He's only 25 years old. He's got so much time. Nathan Cruz. There we go. Right. I am joined. We're officially now on the line with uh, Nathan Irwin. Is that correct? Better known as Nathan Cruz. That is correct, yeah. Nathan Irwin. Who was the wrestler that was in WWE? Was he called Nathan Irwin? No, it was Irwin R. Shyster. No, no, I'm not on about him. I know Irwin R. Shyster. That's, that's my time period. Oh, right. Pal. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm 40 next month. Uh, who was who was Irwin? Was it Irwin? Who was the big, tall Australian that was in Mad Max? Oh, Nathan Jones. That was Nathan. Oh, I'm getting Nathan mixed yeah, up, you yeah, see. Just it. shows you how yeah. stupid I am. <laughs> Just shows you how stupid I am. Uh, now, you see... Me and Nathan, we're from the same neck of the woods. We are from, well, he's from Hull and I'm from Grimsby, which is like 30 minutes away. But we have very differing accents, don't we? When you're in Hull, you pick up the Hull accent. Yeah, it's something, to be honest, I've worked quite hard on trying to avoid. I'm one of the few people from Hull that'll say Hull and not yes, Hull. Yes, usually uh, Hull. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite conscious about that. Yeah, we're with the way I saw you. I've, I've went, I've, right, obviously, I saw you. I came over and did some a couple of seminars for NGW. Who you do a lot of work for, and you do the training there and things. Have we met before then? We have. I was I was thinking about this earlier when uh, when you asked me to come on the podcast. There was, and you will you, you won't remember this at all. There was a period when I was about thirteen. There was a group of us. There was eager to get to a wrestling school. We just didn't know about any of them, and then uh, IPW, as IP, IWP, sorry, uh, came to Hull. At then. The shows that I promoted there, yeah, yeah exactly. at, at the Vulcan, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the Vulcan Arena, and we heard about Jamie Idol, who was originally yeah. from Hull. So we were like, oh right, okay. So where J- Jamie must have got training? Where did he train? And we want to train. Um, and we found out that it was. I, I believe he did a bit of training with yourself. He did, believe, yeah. He, yeah, right. Um, and so from there, we was like, right, okay. So we contacted you over the phone. We had a phone conversation, you and I, when I was thirteen, and I asked you, I said, is it true that you've got a, a, a wrestling school in in Immingham? And you <laughs> replied. Oh no, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> and <we> said, <laughs> oh, oh, gutted. And then two years later, we ended up, unfortunately, training with the Urban Warrior, who you'd sort of <laughs> call on to, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, I, I fully blame you for burdening me with Urban Warrior. I apologise. <laughs> 
I, but then having said that, if I'd not have, have been so generous as to, <laughs> to sell on at such a bargain price, my wrestling story, <laughs> you, would, <laughs> you would never have got started. Uh, and I wouldn't have known of that brilliant story of you. Uh, and that was, for me, that was come up and for, for Ron when I heard about him. <laughs> for what he paid for the training school, that was uh, that was good. <laughs> Do you know, I was when I was I did that wrestling school from I think ninety nine to about two thousand and two, two thousand and three, and it did really well. Honestly, I was I'd, I'd broken my neck, so I couldn't wrestle anymore. So I used to run it on a Sunday night, and it's when wrestling schools were fairly new. There was only really Hammerlock, which had kind of shut down at that point, or was still going, but not really doing like it had done earlier on. Mm. And then there was Mark Sloan training people up in Portsmouth, and there was mine. And I used to have people come from all over the country on a Sunday afternoon and a Sunday night to do this, and I had 30 people at 20 quid each come down on a Sunday and train. That's brilliant, yeah, yeah, it's a good, good number. Foot wrestling, foot yeah. wrestling, <laughs> all I used to do, it was in this freezing cold building, and all I used to do was sit there with a hairdryer stuck up my top trying to keep warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the NGW Academy is much like that now. We've, uh, oh, pal. We've, we've, they've been rationing. Every year we usually have a, a gas cylinder for the heater in there, and then this year the budget's tight and we've not had one. <laughs> it's been... So I, I blow them up with conditioning to get a bit of heat in the room. There you go. Yeah, and <laughs> conditioning was never my thing. Yeah. <laughs> As you can probably tell now, even even more or less now, you know, but there you go. Uh, wonderful. You see, I, somebody did ask me, if I had something to do with the formation of NGW. And I, and I said, I didn't directly, but maybe indirectly, somewhere along the lines, the wrestling in that area of Grimsby and Hull did kind of come from me a little bit. It's, it's, it's this funny old story, really. Yeah, yeah, well, certainly, because it was... I mean, as much as I uh, I wish I had a better start in, in wrestling than when with Urban Warrior, I mean, I was just young and naive and... Yeah, so eager to train. I had the wool pull over my eyes, and I knew the stories that you know you're never going to start out in big arenas. You're going to start out in little community centres, which was where his shows was based. And I'd heard about doing the camp circuit. Ron had the Haven camps in in Yorkshire and uh, Mablethorpe. So it, it to 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 such a young naive person, it all added up. I was like, oh right, okay, so this is you know, where I want to have that start. But then again, you know, I made. A great group of friends there, and uh, some of them, you know, I'm still close with to this day. And because of the the passionate group of individuals that was together there at the time, we, NGW formed from that. From as you know, I started branching out and wrestling elsewhere, and one of the trainees just wanted to go into promoting, and so he started promoting NGW. How is that? How that that's how that worked. That's yeah, yeah. Done. No, ah, no, originally, that... originally it was Luke Ingemels. He started promoting okay. it in 2008, then Rich Dunn came in as a partner in 2009, and uh, by 2010 he was he was running it solely by himself, and it's just snowballed from there into you know the TV show that it's become today. Fantastic. All right, okay, so that's the story there. So Ron, Ron had the camps, did he? Good <laughs> Lord. Yeah, yeah, Ron had the camps in that area at that time, which... Oh. Uh, yeah, it was for those that, for those that, because obviously there's a lot of people listening now. We're, we're doing very well numbers wise. Ron was a chap that I uh, came to my wrestling school, um, and you quickly learn when you have a wrestling school that when they first started, I used to say, "I don't think you're going to be able to do this job. Uh, you're wasting your money coming here." And I did that for the first year, and then you realise actually this is costing me so much money telling <laughs> these people they're not going to be able to do this. So you just let them keep training. And Ron was one of these people we kind of. Let keep training, and he <laughs> he started he started wrestling with a mask. It was a, like a cane mask, wasn't it? But he was called the Urban Warrior. Yeah, he's a he's an utter legend, isn't he, in British wrestling now? <laughs> For all the wrong reasons. British wrestling all the fame. <laughs> oh shame, shame. Sorry. Shame. And yeah, that's it. God bless him. So yeah, and he he obviously started a wrestling school up. Good God, you see that? God, my word. You know, a wrestling school. It's just. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Hey, we'll move on. We'll move on. It yeah. still happens now. It still happens yeah. now, doesn't it? Right. So you were one of these very keen lads. You got started. Uh, fan of American, British. What was you a fan of growing up? Uh, well, initially, which most people, I, I'd say my age group, it was it was American wrestling that had got me interested in it. I was so, and it would by the time like I, I watched it all my life because my dad used to watch it, okay. and. Uh, and it had always been there, but I think it was by the time that I was about six, 
I 